Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I'd like to talk about a lens that is very dear to my heart, and that is the Minolta MD 50mm f1.4 lens. It was released in the early 1980s, and my dad purchased it at the time and ended up shooting most of my childhood images with it. And I have a lot of fond memories of him with his Minolta XD7 camera and this lens attached to it and photographing on holidays and other occasions. And this is always what I associated with a camera, this particular SLR and lens um, attached to it. And when the time came and I got interested in film photography pretty late in my life, as you know, and he passed it on to me, it, immediately meant something special to me. And it's also one of the lenses that taught me a lot about optical performance and, and how lenses render images and what the aperture means and what aperture blades affect, um, how aperture blades affect the images and the bokeh and all that. So it is a very meaningful lens to me. And those of you who've, who know this channel also know that I've um, reviewed a couple of Minolta lenses before. And for me, it just felt appropriate to include this so-called standard lens here as well. And yet, if you take a closer look, you realize, okay, it is, it is a standard lens, a 50 millimeter lens, um, but it was not so much a kit lens at the time, because typically the SLR cameras by Minolta were sold with the f1.7 or even the f2 version. So these were really the cheaper variants. And um, this one here, the f1.4, is still less common. And yet, it was produced in relatively large quantities, um, by Minolta at a time when it was really a, a very prominent and important um, camera manufacturer. Many, many people bought it and that's also part of the reason why until today these lenses can be had for relatively little money and yet, as you will see, the optical performance re is really, really excellent. And you can still adapt these um, lenses to your digital cameras today. So all mirrorless digital cameras like a Sony Alpha 7, for instance, you can simply use an adapter um, and then it's compatible to it. And um, it also kind of remarkably, it is also compatible with any Minolta um, single lens reflex camera produced between 1958 and all the way up to 1998. So. Uh, in order to test it a little bit, I basically on the side casually used a Minolta SLR with this particular lens during photo walks around Munich and also in Berlin um, occasionally at times uh, last year, um, sometimes pre-corona and sometimes during the summer when it was for a brief moment in time possible to travel a little bit. Uh, I did a short trip to Berlin and also captured a couple of images there. So uh, this video is kind of uh, was a side project and it's finally time to talk a little bit about this 50 millimeter lens. So let's dive in there. So before diving into the optical qualities of this lens, let's briefly discuss the haptical qualities. So how does it handle? In my opinion, it feels wonderful in your hands. You get a really nice, solid, hefty feel. It overall feels really high quality and nice. Um, and part of the reason is that it is mostly made out of metal. So the, the lens mount, the um, lens barrel, also the helicoid, and even the filter threads are made of solid metal. Um, overall, it weighs around 240 grams, um, is um, 40 millimeters in length and um, 64 millimeters in diameter. And only the filter size here is different depending on whether you have an earlier version, which has, comes with a um, 55 millimeter filter size, or the later version, which has a 49 millimeter filter size. And um, only in the later versions, um, the aperture ring is made of plastic. Everything else is really solid metal. And in the earlier um, versions, the, even the aperture ring was also made out of aluminum. 
Um, what is really nice about the lens when you're out in the field is that you can get pretty close to your subjects. Um, the minimum focusing distance is 45 millimeters, um, so roughly one and a half feet, which is really convenient if you want to take some close-ups, as you can see here. And of course, that also adds to um, the bokeh that you can create with it if you get that close to your subjects. Um, the focus ring is um, um, with the, the typical diamond patterned um, rubber grip that was common at the time for all the Minolta MD lenses and that I personally really really like. It's also fairly easy to clean so if you get one in a good condition you can you can just clean it up and then have a really nice grip on your focusing ring and be also quick in focusing and turning it. So overall really a high quality feel, mostly metal and great materials that went into the design of this lens. So what about the optical performance of this lens? Well, the optical quality is close to excellent. I would say it's very, very good and solid. And part of the reason is its optical formula, um, which is seven elements in six groups, which it shares with its more expensive um, counterpart, the f1.2 version of the lens. And this here is interesting in the Minolta lineup because typically uh, what you often saw at the time was uh, an f1.4 version as the high performing one in the setup and there was not anything faster but here by the 1980s it was more common to go beyond of course and also earlier as we know um, and have high performance lenses in your setup and that meant that the f1.4 was not so much of a stretch but was already one where you could say okay we optimize here a little bit to make it make the optical performance and quality perfect for that f1.4 aperture that it comes with. Um, so um, what you get as a result is a, a really high resolution and good contrast and also really good and solid sharpness even when shot wide open, especially in the center of the image. Of course you get some softness in the corner um, at f1.4 but once you stop down to f2 or f4 um, it, it really significantly improves the sharpness across the entire frame and I would say the sharpness is at its best at um, f5.6 and um, f8 but afterwards it even decreases a little bit so the sweet spot here is really around that um, f5.6 and f8 point. Um, the um, fall off is of course um, also visible at f1.4 which is common and again this significantly improves once you stop down at f2 it's still visible but at f4 it almost completely disappears. Um, the bokeh is incredible and this is really something that I want to stress in my opinion you get a really nice um, beautiful bokeh for a relatively um, um, nice price point at a relatively nice price point um, at, of course when, when really shot wide open at f1.4 depending on the background situation that you have there are some hard edges here and there but overall in my opinion especially if you stop down a little bit and go close to your subject you get the beautiful creamy bokeh smooth transitions that really draw you into the image as you can see here in a couple of examples and in my opinion, that creates that beautiful mixture of a lens that is already corrected a little bit and optimized, um, which was common for the early 1980s and also um, late 1970s. But still you have that legacy feel when shooting it either on film or on the digital sensor camera today, you can see, okay, this is a legacy lens and it, it creates a certain special look and feel with it. Um, so I personally, I really, really like that bokeh and I, particularly like what kind of optical quality you get for um, the price point that this um, lens is at. Um, also with respect to chromatic aberrations, as mentioned before, it's well corrected for them. Um, so you, you don't have um, a lot of problems with chromatic aberrations, even on a digital um, camera. And of course for Lightroom, there are also profiles for it. Um, and shooting it on film was, was hardly any, I encountered hardly any problems here. 
And what I like about this lens is that even looking at ghosting and flaring, it's really hard to create these effects with this particular lens. Um, I shot some sample images, as you can see here, where I try to force it, really shooting into the sun or reflections of the sun that should come straight to the lens or came to, straight to the lens. And that typically creates some kind of flaring, at least, or ghosting effects. And it, did, it didn't occur here in my, in my case. Or, or only slightly, as you can see. So overall, really great optical performance for relatively little money, great value lens, and I highly recommend you take a look at it, especially if you want to shoot with the Minolta SLR um, system or um, on a digital camera with any kind of adapter for Minolta MC or MD lenses. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and my review of the Minolta MD 50mm f1.4 lens. My sentimental lens that was originally purchased by my dad and then passed on to me. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.